The Turtle Room, Education, Conservation, Survival. Hi guys, this is Anthony from The Turtle Room here in the turtle basement, in my turtle basement, and wanted to share something that I think is really um, pretty revolutionary and pretty interesting. Um, I talk about it a lot through word of mouth, but haven't actually presented um, what we're doing here with snake rack um, raising of uh, small terrestrial and semi-aquatic turtles. So um, you see the snake racks behind me. Um, basically, one of the main things you have to do with uh, these small turtles, be it box turtles from you know the genus terrapine or um, uh, Cora or um, species like Geomita spangleri, like the black-breasted leaf turtles, or Geomita japonica. Um, these species all need security, humidity, um, above all else. If you actually spend time out in the wild uh, tracking turtles like wood turtles or box turtles, things of that nature, um, you don't really find neonates, you don't really find juveniles that often because they spend all their time hiding in the muck um, under like the secondary forest, like levels, uh, different levels of the forest, things like that. So they're not actually getting UV, uh, UVB um, when they're down there. So that's much less important than things like security, humidity, diet, um, that play a much larger role in how healthy they are. Um, and there's research to back this up that says, hey, you know, we've been, looking for box turtles for the past 10 years and we've only found this many neonates over the course of the 10 years, but we found this huge amount of adults. So where are the hatchlings and juveniles hanging out? Um, and that, you know, it's pretty much known that they're just hanging out in the, in the muck and, and things like that. You might find them when you are mowing your yard much more easier than because you're disturbing all the ground and everything and they might be hiding under um, you might find them much more easier than someone who's actually out spending their time trying to find box turtles. So um, anyway, uh, I began using uh, clear sterlite tubs um, as the collection grew, as I was hatching more leaf turtles and things of that nature. Um, I needed more space. Um, I would basically just give them like one light on all the tubs and give them a clear lid. And if I saw condensation, that was good. But one of the, it was really difficult to regulate the temperature. Uh, that way, one tub would be 85 degrees, another tub would be 70 degrees, and I would be moving them around based on species. So like, let's say the leaf turtles from the Ryukyu Islands like it a little warmer, so I'd move them to where it's in the 80s, and then the ones from Vietnam and China like it a little cooler, so I'd move them over here. And I was uh, constantly playing this like musical chairs. Um, so. Here, with the snake racks, basically you can provide ambient light with the strip light down the front. And um, because of the amount of uh, tubs you get from these, you can keep the animals separate from one another. So instead of having four young turtles kept together in a, an enclosure where they're stressing each other out, they're, they're fighting for food, that sort of thing, they can actually stay on their own and, and it reduces the stress. You make sure you can know if everyone's eating much more easily and um, you can provide you know fresh water high humidity um, and a proper diet where you again know what's getting eaten so um, so far the results have been amazing um, we've never lost a hatchling that we've raised this way the growth rates are so fast in fact that eventually they have to come out of the, the snake rack so that they can slow their growth so that there are not um, you know future issues related to rapid growth and um, Basically, it's become so far really a, a foolproof um, and wholly uh, positive um, way to raise hatchling uh, turtles of, of various species. Um, so far, we've successfully raised um, Cohelan box turtles, aquatic box turtles, in here, um, Cora ambonensis. Um, we've raised Cora Beretti in here successfully, um, so several species with the, within the Cora genus. Um, Reeves turtles, uh, the two leaf turtle species I mentioned, we've successfully raised um, other species as well that I'm not thinking about right now, but there's been quite a few and it's again all been successful and um, I think with the key being that these species 
for the most part, really benefit from security and you know diet and humidity over um, UVB. I think that it's a no-brainer. And when I'm on classifieds or um, Facebook pages and stuff like that for turtles, and people are talking about UVB, UVB, UVB for young animals. Hey, I just found this box turtle. What do I need? Get a UVB. Like, it's really not important. Actually, a young box turtle would actually be scared by direct sunlight because it would it would know that it's prone to predators at that moment. So it actually needs shade and it needs to be in the wet human environment where it could just kind of sit there. There's bugs there and it could just hang out and it has food and it can get stronger and larger before it actually ventures out at any point, if that makes sense. So this is kind of just looking at the natural history of what animals actually show us they need and then you know, giving them exactly what they need instead of treating them like smaller versions of adult turtles because they're not. So I hope that makes sense. And, you know, if anyone has any interest in setting something up like this, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Um, next year in the Badiger magazine that's put up by the TTPG, we'll have an article on this, um, on this setup and um, talk a little more about specifics and, and what's worked well and, and um, how people can kind of emulate this sort of thing themselves. Thanks so much for watching and uh, see you next time. For more information on this and other exciting colonian species, visit theturtleroom.com. Check back every Monday night for new videos from The Turtle Room.